Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In this session, we will learn about encapsulation in C++. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we'll be covering today. So we'll start by understanding what is encapsulation in C++. Why do we need encapsulation in C++? Then we will learn about access modifiers. After that, we'll understand the benefits of encapsulation and also the difference between encapsulation and abstraction. So let's start with encapsulation in C++. Encapsulation is a very important concept of object-oriented programming. It can be defined as wrapping up of data and functions together into a single unit. Just like a capsule, the data members and functions are wrapped together. Wrapping them into a single unit helps in keeping them secure from the outside access. For example, inside a class, the variables and functions are declared and then bind together with the help of class, which also implements encapsulation. Next is, why do we need encapsulation? Hiding the details or attributes is also an important thing that one should focus on. Encapsulation helps with that part. It keeps the details of the object hidden or safe from the users by securing them from the outside access. There are many implementation details that the users are not supposed to see. So these details, like the details of the object, are kept secure from the direct access from outside the class with the help of encapsulation. The data hiding is done with the help of access modifiers. So let's understand these access modifiers. The access modifiers helps in data hiding part. The access modifiers provides or grant the access to the members of the class or it prevents them from the direct access to the class members from outside the class. So there are generally three types of access modifiers that is public, private and protected. So let's understand them. In public access modifier, other classes and function can access the data members and member functions of the public class. For example, park is a public property. Anybody can go to the park or access the park because it's a public. Nobody has to take the allowance of anybody to go to the park. Now coming to the private. In private access modifiers, only the member functions inside the class have the access to the class members. Functions outside the class cannot access them. For example, a house is a private property. Any member outside the family cannot access the house without permission. Only members inside the family can access it because it's a private property. Now let's understand protected. In protected access modifier, similar to private scope, it cannot be accessed from the outside class. But it can be accessed from the derived class. The derived class is also called the child class. Also, the protected member of a class can be accessed from the friend function. So as we have understood about these access modifiers, now let's understand the benefits of encapsulation. Encapsulation helps in reducing the complexity of code by hiding the irrelevant data or information and by doing so, it reduces the complexity. Second is, encapsulation helps in hiding and protecting the data by wrapping the data and function together which are generally complex and by doing so provides a simpler view to the user. With the help of encapsulation, the variables of the class can be hidden from other classes. Third is, encapsulated classes can easily be altered using the access modifiers. That is, we don't need to change the entire program. All we need to do is to change the access scope of the variables that can be private, protected or public. So these were some benefits of encapsulation. Now let's go ahead and understand the difference between encapsulation and abstraction. Both of these concepts are similar in some ways, but now we will discuss their differences. So let's start with encapsulation. Encapsulation helps in combining the data and functions together in a single unit. Whereas in abstraction, the unwanted information is kept hidden. Encapsulation helps in hiding the data and helps in providing an easier view. Abstraction helps in hiding the implementation details. 
encapsulation can be implemented using an access modifier whereas abstraction can be implemented using abstract class and interfaces in encapsulation problems are solved at implementation level and in abstraction problems are solved at design level so these were some differences between encapsulation and abstraction let's go ahead and do some practical examples on this topic if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more so this is our code editor that is visual studio code and now let's create a new file and let's name it encapsulation dot cpp so first of all we know in encapsulation we can make variables inaccessible by making their scope as private so in this example we will do that we will make the salary of an employee as private and then using the setter and gather methods we will set the value of salary and return it as well the setter getter methods are generally used in these kind of situations where the variable we want to access is private so now let's start first of all we will create the main function but before that let's add the header files now using namespace standard now we'll start with the main function and inside the main function first of all we'll create an object by declaring the class name let's say the class name is company and the object name is obj now using this object we will call the set function or we can say the setter function we will name it as set salary let's say and we will pass two values thirty thousand and six thousand one would be the full time salary and one would be the overtime all right now after that we can display those and we can write total salary and and uh, after that we can call the get function to return the salary as the getter function is used to return the output and set function is used to set the values so we'll write obj dot get salary so the salary we will display over here and after that we can write the return zero now the main function is done now let's start with company class company class company and inside this class first of all inside the private scope this is the private scope and this is the variable salary now this variable salary is private so no member outside the class can access it but using the setter and getter methods we will access this variable and we will set the salary and then we will return it all right now public scope inside the public scope we will write the setter methods void set salary and int full time int overtime so these are two variables this 30000 that we are passing is a full time salary and this 6000 is an overtime salary so we need to add both of these salaries in this part so we'll write salary equals full time plus overtime so this would be the total salary and let's just do this all right so this set salary function is done this is the setter function now we have to return using the getter function so we'll write the data type int get salary 
now inside the function we will simply return the variable salary as we can see and once the class will use this semicolon all right pretty much everything is done and now we can save it and let's try as you can see total salary is 36000 as 30000 plus 6000 so it is working fine so this is how we can access these private variables using these setter and getter methods now let's do another example this example of encapsulation will also be pretty much the same we'll do the setter getter methods in this one as well but in this example we'll find the area of circle all right let's start then first of all we'll include the header files that is hash include io stream and the namespace standard we also forgot to save this let's name this one as first of all the location is work now let's name it as encapsulation 2.cpp alright now the header files are added now we'll start with the main function first of all now inside this main function we'll create an object first of all we'll write the name of the class that is ball now the name of the object is obj now using this obj object we will call the setter function that is the set area function and we will pass the radius all right obj dot set area this is the setter function now we will pass the radius now now we can display the area by calling that getter function but before that we will display a message we'll write area of ball is all right now we will call that getter function get area all right the main function is done now we need to create the class class ball inside this class private scope inside the private scope will create that variable area and let's make its data type as float because we know that there are chances that the answer could be in decimal form because we have to use pi in that because the area of circle is pi r square so 3.14 is the value so that is why we are using float as the data type all right now in the public scope we'll set the radius inside this function set area and int radius this is the radius that is 6 that we are passing this is the art this is the parameter and inside this function area equals we know that pi r square is the formula so we'll write 3.14 that is the value of pi into radius again into radius r square all right so this is the area of circle or ball we can say after that float is the data type now we have to return the area using the getter function float getter its name is get area get area and we'll simply return the area variable all right after that we can use semicolon in the end and pretty much everything is done so let's save it and let's check it if it is running fine or not
as you can see area of ball is 113.04 so if we multiply 3.14 that is the value of pi with 36 that is 6 into 6 it will give you 113.04 so this is the right answer and this is how we can find the area of ball or something like that and as we can see here the area is private and using these set area and get area methods that is the setter and getter methods we are accessing this private variable that is area so these were two examples of encapsulation you can try these examples as well all right guys with that we have come to the end of this session if you like this session please give it a thumbs up i hope it really helped you all thanks for watching stay safe and keep learning Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.